Well, hello everybody, it's Paul Lake again, your personal physics pal, here with another physics problem solved to completion with uh, plenty of explanations. And uh, please like and subscribe my channel, I really appreciate that. Uh, and today we're just going to look at a very simple problem, it's a free fall problem, kind of a beginner's problem. If you're, if you're just starting uh, dealing with free fall, this is a good problem uh, to look at. And uh, here it is, uh, we have a rock and it's dropped from the top of a tall building. If it takes 4.3 seconds to hit the ground, how tall is the building and how fast is the rock moving just before it hits the ground? And then uh, draw a kinematic stack for the rock. And I'll explain what that is if you've never seen one before, but it's a really handy little diagram. Um, and here's the stuff you should know. You should know uh, what what do we mean by free fall? What is the definition of free fall? Of course, I'll go over that. Um, you should be definitely already familiar with the kinematic equations uh, for constant acceleration. And then uh, and then if you've never heard of a kinematic stack, I'll try to explain it to you. But it's a, it's just a graph where you have position is a function of time stacked on top of velocity is a function of time stacked on top of acceleration is a function of time. So we're going to we're going to do all that in this problem. So um, now if you want to take a crack at it, uh, pause the video now and um, um, and uh, unpause it when you're ready to go. So let's do it. Let's do it. OK, I like to use given, find and solve. So given I'm going to write down uh, what's given in this problem around a drawing. It says uh, drop from a tall building. So let me kind of expand this up here so you can see it a little better. So I'm going to draw a building. I always like to sketch out the problem so I can visualize it. It's very, it requires some discipline actually. So here's the, here's the building of an unknown height. I'll call that height H. So we want to know what is the height of this building. And it's dropped. And if something is dropped, uh, that usually means that you know you're just you're just holding it like right here, and then whoop, you drop it. So that means that its initial velocity, the velocity at time zero, the velocity when time equals zero, is equal to zero. And then it's going to fall down. And then we want to know here here's the rock just before it hits the ground. And uh, we want to know, what is its final velocity? So I use V for final velocity here. Um, and uh, one of the things you do recall, like a lot of students, when, when they drop something, they know that at the end it hits the ground and maybe it stops or bounces or something like that. Remember that we are dealing with a time interval here where the acceleration is a constant for that entire time interval. And it's going to be accelerating down until it makes contact with the ground. So what we're doing is we're looking at the rock just before it hits the ground. So it's not in contact yet. It's like an infinitesimal distance away from hitting that ground. Okay. Um, and so this is what's given. Now, you do have to know what the acceleration is. It's the acceleration due to gravity. Some people call it g. Uh, and I, I'll write it down as g here, but I'm just going to use it as a in my equations. And it's negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So that's what the acceleration of gravity is. If you're on Earth, you're near the surface, you, you, if you measure the gravity of something that you drop, now of course here we're assuming no air resistance. And all these problems we're going to assume no air resistance. And so um, the acceleration will be 9.8 meters per second every second in a downward direction. That's what that negative means. I like to make down negative and up positive. If you don't like that, you can reverse them as long as you stay, you know, uh, consistent with that throughout the problem. It, it won't be a problem for you. Okay, now what are we trying to, to uh, find? Well, for A... Uh, how tall is the building? I've called that H. And for B, we want to know how fast is it going just before it hits the ground. And then C, we want a kinematic stack. And I'll explain what that is in a little bit. All right, so let me pinch out a little here. And let's work the problem. Let's solve it. 
And again, um, if you watch a lot of my videos, you're going to get tired of this, but it's really important to clearly identify what are you given, what are you trying to find, and, and, and then solve it, you know, separately. And, oh, I did leave one thing out. Wh when does this velocity happen? At this final velocity happen? It occurs after 4.3 seconds. So, yeah, you can't solve it without that information. So let's solve A. And let me increase this a little bit again. Okay, so we want to know H. Now, H is really like what its displacement is. It's going to fall down, and we're going to call it delta Y. And, of course, you know, we have kinematic equations. Um, and I'll, you're probably still pretty new to this stuff, so let me write down the kinematic equations. Uh, B equals V naught plus AT. Delta Y equals the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2 times time. Delta Y, our displacement in the Y direction, equals our initial velocity times time plus 1 half the acceleration times time squared. And of course, the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus twice the acceleration times delta y. If we're doing horizontal motion, I just replace the delta y's with delta x's and make sure every, you know, in, in this problem, everything's lined up with the y direction. Now, one of the things we can see is that, that it's going to fall down. So we're going to calculate this delta y. And that delta y is equal to the height of the cliff. So that's one thing to recognize right away. And notice what's given. The reason we have these four equations is that we can we, we can choose which one of these to use so that we can solve what we're trying to find. So we're really trying to find delta y. So I need something with delta y in it. Well, that means this equation's no good. We're given time and initial velocity. Well, here's initial velocity in all of them. But notice there's no time in this one. So I don't want to use that equation. And then uh, uh, we know what the acceleration is. And uh, so we don't want to use this. So there's no acceleration in here. So we're going to use this equation kind of through a process of elimination. So let me write the equation. I always write the basic equation that I'm going to use to solve the problem plus 1 half a t squared. Now our initial velocity is 0. That's really handy because that means this is going to go to zero. And um, and now I can just solve for delta y directly by pl pl plugging in my values. That's 1 half negative 9.81 meters per second squared. You can use 9.8 if you want. And then the time is 4.3 seconds. And we, of course, have to square that. Now, uh, I already worked this out. So plug that into your calculator. And hopefully, you'll get this answer. Uh, uh, you'll get delta y equals negative 90.7 meters. Now delta y, that's that's how far it fell down, but we want to know how high the building is. So therefore, h is equal to 9. You know what? I'm going to round this off to two significant figures because time is two, given in two significant figures. So I think this, so I'm just going to call it 91 meters. That's good enough. And there we go. We're done with part uh, part A. Now part B. Same kind of thing. Now we want the final velocity. We're given uh, the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time. And we want the final velocity. Uh, well, oh, I wish I could uncross out all those. But which one of these? Well, we don't, we don't want to use this one. We don't want to use this one because it doesn't have what we're trying to find in it. It doesn't have final velocity, so we can't use this one. But, uh, and, 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 and by the way, we do know what delta y is, so we could use uh, this one or this one, because they both have, uh, but, but why, why use that? Because what if I made a mistake calculating it? I don't want to carry that mistake forward. So I want to use an, an equation to solve for the final velocity that doesn't have um, delta y in it. Okay, and that would just be the first one, and it's already solved for what we're trying to find, so that's really nice. V equals V naught plus A times T. So the velocity equals the initial velocity, that's zero, plus negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And then the time, sorry, 
the time is, uh, let's see, 4.3 seconds. Okay. And if you multiply that out, you should get, neg and round it off to two significant configures, you should get uh, 40, negative 42 meters per second. Okay. Now, what does this negative mean? Okay, remember, velocity is a vector quantity. It has magnitude and direction. And we're just dealing with the y direction in this problem. So if something is, is, has an upward velocity, that would be a positive. But this, this rock is falling down. So this velocity is in a negative direction. So there we go. Now what we want to do is we want to graph the kinematic uh, um, variables. We want to graph position and velocity and acceleration as functions of time. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, here's, I'm just going to draw, just just make it a hand sketch. Yeah, uh, uh, now, uh, oh, this part, C. Um, you, if you have graph paper, it makes it a lot easier, but um, so here I go. Now I know that, so this is position. Uh, actually, let's call that Y. And we'll make this the origin right here, right? So, um, so this, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. The Y is negative. Oh, well, yeah. So we can make, draw a kinematic equation, uh, a kinematic stack for this. So this is all going to be negative. It's a very negative problem. So, um, now this, when I draw, this is going to be my position y in meters. This is going to be my velocity in the y direction in meters per second. And this is going to be my acceleration in, um, in meters per second squared. Um, now I want, let's, and what I try to do is I try to make these, the time axis here, try to make the time axis all parallel so we can kind of see the motion. Uh, what's going on with the motion, and I'll just go one, two, three, four, five. This is time in seconds. Now what I try to do is just go one, two, three, four, five, like that. So one, two, three, four, five. So the, the, in other words, the time axis should be the same. And then it, again, it's really easy to do on graph paper. Boom. But I don't know, I printed this out on plain paper. And so, and I got skill. I can do this on, I got the skills. So this is time in seconds, time in seconds. So now what you need to do is you need to kind of construct this. Now, the easiest one is the acceleration, because we know what the acceleration is. It's, it's just the acceleration due to the pull of Earth's gravity, which hopefully you've learned in your class is a constant value. And, it, and we know what the constant is. It's negative 9.81. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oh no, 9, 10. Eh, I don't like that. Let's make it... Uh, Two, two, four, six, eight, ten. We'll make this ten. So we don't really need all that. And so it's it's nine point uh, negative nine point eight, which is right here, and it's negative nine point eight the whole time, like that. Okay. Now let's take a look at velocity. What was the? Uh, it started at zero. And then it reached a maximum velocity of negative 42. So I'm going to go 10, 20, 30, 40. Notice I, I adjust, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40. Of course, these are negative, negative direction. And so it ends at 42. So, you know, 42 would be right about there. This is kind of cheating. No, it's not cheating. Oh, wait, 4.3. But that happens at 4.3. Right, this 42 meters per second happens at a time of t equals 4.3 seconds. That's what was given. So find 4.3 and then come straight down there. 
and we've got that. And, and, and because velocity is a, um, well, I mean, the, the acceleration is the slope of the velocity graph. This is a straight line since, since acceleration is constant. Here, let me, uh, yeah, I could probably get a ruler and do it, but I could just do it freehand like that. And then, and you know, another thing, I should take this 4.3 and bring it down like that to here. And that's where the problem ends. So we should terminate that ex constant acceleration at 4. Well, eh, it's a little off. That's okay. And then um, now, now the position graph is the hardest one to, to draw. And uh, there's various ways of doing it. But the first thing I want to know is, okay, um, it fell down. 90.7, we'll call it 91. So we're just, we're just going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, uh, 90. So 90 would be, you know, so, uh, so we'll just go 20, 40, 60, 80, so that's, that'd be 90 right there. Okay, and it's good. we'll just take it up to oh, 4.3. Oops, <laughs> I gotta fudge it a little bit. Again, use graph paper if you have it. Uh, but you don't need it, you don't need graph paper. Um, here's uh, 60, 70, 80, 90, and so it's 91. So it's gonna be right here. But remember, this is going to be a, a uh, parabola, right? It's, uh, and here's the function, delta y equals 1 half at squared. So now I can, I can say, okay, well, after one second, what is delta y? Well, um, 1 half of at squared. Well, 1 second squared is 1. 1 times 9.8 is, well, negative 9.8 is negative, and, and divided by 2 is, is negative 4.9. So here's 10, 4.9 would be right about there. So it starts off at zero. D delta Y is zero. And then it's gonna go down like that. All right, so, and then at two seconds, well, I just plug in the two. Uh, it's gonna be um, two, uh, two seconds, that's two, it's four. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times 9.8 is 19.6. So it's just under 20. And then at 3 seconds, we can do the same thing. I'm going to use a calculator for this. I'm a wimp. Okay, so 9.81 times 9, because three, 3 squared is 9. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. And that's going to be 44. So here's 50, 40, 44 is going to be right about there. And then if, and we don't really need to do four seconds. You can, you can kind of see the way these dots are. If you're going to make a nice smooth curve, it does indeed make a nice upside down parabola. And kinematic stacks are really cool things to uh, be able to do. If you could draw a kinematic stack accurately, you really, you really understand kinematics uh, pretty well. Remember that velocity describes the slope. So here the velocity is zero. So the slope is zero. And then as time goes by, the slope becomes more and more negative. Can you see that? The slope of this parabola is in increasing in a negative direction, right? I mean, it's it's getting more and more and more negative. And that's indeed what happens to the velocity. It gets more and more and more negative. And of course, this slope is uh, the acceleration, right? Delta, remember that acceleration equals delta V over delta T, right? So, so if you make a little slope triangle, right? This, here's your delta v over delta t, and you can just pick any two values on there and calculate that slope, and it'll be 9.8. And then uh, this has zero slope, and because it's constant acceleration. Also remember the area, Just and I'm just doing a little review here, the area 
underneath an acceleration versus time graph. That's your change in velocity. And the area underneath here, that's going to be your, your delta y, your change in displacement in the y. And uh, the area of this is meaningless. <laughs> of, of, of a position is a function of time. It really doesn't mean anything. When you're doing slopes, you're doing dif differential calculus. And when you're doing areas, you're doing um, integ integ uh, integration. So, um, you know, it helps you get ready for your calculus classes by learning physics. Anyway, I hope this was clear. Let's take a look at the whole problem. And uh, oh, blow it up a little bit. So there you go. Um, another physics problem solved to completion with more explanation than you asked for. Um, I am a private tutor in physics, so um, check in the uh, video descriptions. I do have uh, a little uh, link to a flyer that um, has information on how to get in touch with me so that if you need a physics tutor, uh, uh, I, I can do that. I do tutor uh, students online. I do online uh, physics tutoring using Zoom, and I'm good at it. Okay, hope this helped. You, you all have a, a, a great day and may the net force be with you always.